Harlan Boyle's lecture series is, um, you know, it's got a, a special place in my heart because of uh, uh, my, my father and mother's association with it from the, the early days of it coming together. And uh, I know how much they enjoyed uh, being a part of it and uh, they, they, to my knowledge, did not miss any chance uh, to be there and be there, you know, not just for a short time, but as long as they could be and take it all in. I was privileged to serve on the board of trustees and it was at the time I was serving on the board that uh, th at that time Dean of uh, the business school, Ken Peacock, and I came up with the idea of sponsoring a lecture series that uh, would bring uh, outstanding business leaders to the campus and ask them to uh, participate in a, in a day of not only lectures but also visitation with the students at the uh, Walker School of Business. 50 lectures, that is unbelievable to have had 50 distinguished speakers come to our campus. You know, I just, I can't believe it's been that long. And I've always teased uh, uh, Chancellor Peacock to say that uh, I remember it was a rainy day and that that visit would never have occurred if it not, had not been a rainy day because otherwise I would have been on the golf course. <laughs> yeah, Senator Broyhill reminds me of that story every time that we talk about the beginning of the Boyle's Lecture Series. If it hadn't rained, he wouldn't have come. I just got very lucky that day. Even though it was a rainy day, the sun was shining in that office. I feel that it is imperative that students hear from and know business leaders who can come into the classroom and tell them a little bit about the practicality of, of uh, working in and running a, a business. I think it's special because it's attracted you know, a lot of good CEOs that have shared a lot of information that, that's somewhat hard to come by sometimes. You're getting it you know, directly from them you're getting a chance to access them and speak with them in an, in an informal setting you know, before lunch, after lunch, at the reception, and I would take advantage of that. And so we started out on an act of faith and thought, where will this go? And we got such tremendous response and interest from our students and from the business community that said, this is a good thing. And so we really knew at the very beginning, even without a name, that we had a winner on our hands. Something great was going to happen from this. We then came uh, down to the question of how do we name it? And for whom do we name this lecture series? Senator Broyhe and I talked about that at length to decide a person, a statesman in North Carolina. We didn't want to tie anything to politics at all. We wanted someone that really represented North Carolina. It so happened that our friend Harlan Boyles, who was at that time the treasurer of North Carolina, uh, was holding uh, uh, meetings on the campus. You couldn't find anyone that we thought was a better representative of our state. We got a winner. We couldn't have gotten a better name, a better person to represent the lecture series than Harlan Boyles. Business-wise, uh, where many folks, I guess, would know him, uh, he took great pride in uh, being a state employee and, and state treasurer for, uh, for many years and working in that office for many years and uh, um, that was his passion. One of the last conversations I had with him was how much he had enjoyed the route he had taken in life and the route he had taken in work and uh, he couldn't have, wouldn't have changed anything about what he did. I know that he was very flattered to, and, and humbled to be um, you know, the, the name that, that they added to the lecture series and uh, so having it called the Harlan Bulls Lecture Series was a, a great point of pride for my father. As I reflect on the past 25 years, I can tell you that Appalachian has been very fortunate to have attracted some of the best leaders in North Carolina. You reflect back over that and realize we truly have been fortunate to attract these individuals, but that also shows the kind of leadership that you have in North Carolina, leaders that really understand the value of public higher education. Today, for the 50th installment, we have invited back four outstanding business leaders for a panel discussion. Robert Tillman is the former chairperson, president, and CEO of Lowe's Companies. His April the 17th, 1998 speech was entitled, The Retelling of Retailing. 
William Holland is the former chairman and CEO of United Dominion Industries. His October the 20th, 1992 lecture was entitled, A Vision, Perspiration and Inspiration. Robert Ingram is the former CEO of Glaxo Welcome. His March 18th, 2004 lecture was entitled, Ethics and Industry, The Face in the Mirror. And James Morgan is the president and CEO of Krispy Kreme Donuts. His March the 26th, 2009 lecture was entitled, Pursuing a Passion While Writing an Epitaph. Appalachian was, I think, very wise to set this up and, and the good folks that set it up, uh, you know, such as Senator Boy Hill and uh, Chancellor Peacock uh, back when. Uh, um, they were, they, were, they were good thinkers and good planners and, uh, and, and seeing it uh, become what it has is uh, very special to me and my family and uh, I'm just lucky to be, be associated with it and uh, again I'm looking forward to, to many more years of this. So thank you. The Harlan Bulls lecture series has been highly successful at Appalachian State and at the Walker School of Business. It's my hope that it continues uh, for years to come. But more than that, that not only the speakers who come, but the man for whom we have named it continues to have an inspiration uh, to the students who are coming along in the future. A man who overcame adversity and achieved a high office in the state of North Carolina. In other words, to show that with education, preparation that you can achieve great things. At the time this program was started I was in a different job. I was in the Walker College of Business and that program meant a lot to me, to my students, to my faculty and to my staff. Now I'm in a different job. I'm at a level of the Chancellor of Appalachian State University and I see the value of this program to this entire university with business leaders that come to campus, give of their time, their energy, and their resources to transform the lives of young people. These business leaders of North Carolina, they care about the future of North Carolina. They care about the young people on the campus of Appalachian State University, and that makes me very proud.